is awesome. I'm guessing there'll be some in attendance who are already coming prepared with some questions, hopefully not too hard hitting, but uh, Mike's going to talk to us today about using and leveraging AI uh, in our content marketing and um, generation. So among other things, so I'm glad to, glad to have you with us, Mike, and we'll turn it over to you for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, if you've got questions along the way for our participants, go ahead and throw them in the chat. And then when Mike's through, um, we'll we'll dig into the to the question and answer. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, if that's all right. Yep. Is that coming through? Okay. Yep. Very cool. All righty. All right. Yeah, I have got just so much information that we're going to be only uh, touching the tip of the iceberg here. So um, if I start talking too fast, please bear with me and, and we can do uh, questions at the end. I'm, I'm going to share as much as I can in, in the brief time. We've got, got my timer on here, so I'm going to keep an eye on that as well. I don't want to go uh, over here. So um, what we are about today is this whole process of using AI to bring in the types of clients that we want into our business. And um, AI, of course, is this you know amazing thing that's happening in our world right now. And you know, I think people are a little bit anxious about it, um, as well as excited at the same time. And you know, some of you may remember, and I, I think I'm probably dating myself unless you go back in the movie archives, you know, the story of uh, 2001, a space odyssey where the computer takes over and HAL 9000 decides it's smarter than the humans. Are we in that kind of a world? Or, you know, maybe we're in this whole sort of Skynet type of world that we saw in Terminator. Is that really kind of where we're going here? And I, I don't know the answer to that. And in fact, um, there's, I think, some evidence that all of the hype that we're hearing and all of the buzz around um, uh, around AI is at a point where we're, we're, we're going to kind of head downwards in terms of what actually uh, is being talked about. This is very typical for new technologies, is there's a rapid rise, and then as the problems begin to surface and challenges are, you know, are become recognized. It, it's, you know, there's this sort of disillusionment phase right now, when it comes to content marketing, that whole phase is about what I'll call the infinite spam paradox. In other words, what happens if as marketers, we just totally flood consumers with AI spam, which is totally possible at this point. And, you know, of course, at that point, the value of marketing is, you know, nobody's going to open emails, you know, who knows what's going to happen with social media. Um, you may have caught this story back um, in the fall where uh, Amazon said no more AI ebooks. They were getting swamped with these books. And now that now they actually have a limit. You can only publish three per day. That's per day. <laughs> so, it, you know, there's this sort of... Um, uh, uh, arms race going on uh, in the content marketing world, in case you're not aware. And ultimately, it, it's the same, it kind of ends up in the same place. If everybody has it, everybody's using it, then nobody has it. So I think what's critical is to recognize that we're still, you know, human beings. We've We've been evolving for millions of years, depending on how you look at it. And ultimately, it's up to us to create the future, okay? And so we're gonna see, I'm gonna do my best to um, help us you know, figure out best ways to, to do that here. So my goal for you um, for today, um, to the best of my ability is by the end of this talk, you'll be better able to harness the power of AI to create better content faster. And let's face it, without you know, making an ours of ourselves in front of our audience, because that is definitely possible with this technology if if we you know don't handle it the right way. Uh, so just a little bit about me, you know, who who am I to be talking about this? I'll I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm I'm on the journey right along with the rest of of us, and uh, but just you know where my background is, uh, I'm a um, 
professionally, what I do is I write copy uh, for uh, companies to help them find their customers. Um, I've done a lot of training in digital marketing as, as well as uh, offline marketing. Um, these are just some of the companies that I've helped um, over the years. And um, so that being said, I would like to know what is your experience with AI at this point in time? We'll come back to this here in a second. If you would, if you're, um, you know, really rocking with this, if you feel like your content is great, thanks to using AI, please type in a one in the chat. If you're at a stage where you're just dabbling with it, have had occasional success, um, please type in a two. And if you have totally stayed away from it and haven't tried using AI at all in your content marketing um, for your business, then if you would uh, type in a three. And we'll, let's, I'd like to come back to that and just get a sense of, of where everybody is with it. So in the meantime, while you're while you're entering that, um, basically what I'm going to try to share with you today is a very simple framework that you can start using right away, and a few quick examples as well as some tools that you might want to try. And again, this is really just scratching the surface, um, but I want to give you at least an overview of some of the things that you can accomplish. Um, here's why it matters: is if you're not using AI in your content, you're probably falling behind. But at the same time. You know, we don't want to just dive into this thing without knowing, you know, a few things about, you know, some of the pros and cons. One thing I will say is that from my experience at this point, um, using AI in, in a variety of ways, you, you can't be lazy about this. It, this is definitely something that you need to be involved with. You can't just push a button, although that's kind of the, the name of the presentation here. It's not quite, you know, push uh, what they call it, button pushing to, to get a result here. It really requires, I think, you know, to get the results that you want, it's going to require commitment to excellence in, in mastering this machine. So um, I'm going to take a quick look at the chat here. Um, and I just want to get a, a feel for where we all are. If I can do this, let's see. Oh, it's taking me to welcome Q&A. I think we're going to have to come back to that because uh, this is not coming up for me. All right, I'm going to move on if I can. Let's see here. Let's jump out of that and then back into here. Okay, uh, I'll save that for the end. Um, let's talk a little bit briefly about where um, AI falls short. Of course, it it can do some, uh, actually start here with uh, doing the, the things that AI I have found are really good at is um, uh, doing research. Uh, it, it you can uh, kind of go back and forth with, for instance, Chat GPT. Uh, it has that chat format where you can start asking it um, for ideas for things to research. I find it's also very good for outlining your content. I'll say, all right, give me you know a ten point outline for uh, an ebook that I'm planning, for instance. Uh, it's it's just like all of the kind of algorithms and and, and computer programs that we've had for a while except on steroids, it's really good at crunching massive amounts of data. So if you're, again, kind of in the research phase, you're looking for ideas, you can take huge articles and ask AI, AI hey, or, or chat in this case, tell me, you know, what are the, the three key points relating to the thing that I'm, I'm searching for? So the filtering aspect is really good. Brainstorming, um, I use, chat as a kind of a sparring partner for ideas. Um, I challenge it, it challenges me. Then of course, editing, it's also very easy to just run your content through it and, and get some ideas for things that it could be better. And finally, targeting, in other words, using the, the big data portion to uh, identify who your audience is, um, it, it can be very helpful there. Things that it lacks, originality, I mean, obviously, it can come up with ideas that seem novel to you. However, you really, as you sort of drive the purpose of the content, need to provide that originality. Um, specificity, oftentimes what you're getting is this really broad, vague, bland stuff, and you've got to really dig to get stuff, get something worthwhile out of it. Um, veracity, you, you always have to check what it's what it's saying. It It is not that it's trying to be dishonest, but oftentimes, uh, it isn't necessarily something that can be verified. So uh, trust, but verify, as Ronald Reagan would say. 
um, idiomatic expressions, just little things that we as humans use to kind of humanize our communications with each other. It's just, it doesn't have that unless you train it, which is possible. I haven't mastered that part yet, but train it to speak in your voice. And then of course, authenticity. Um, so the good and the bad that can happen, it can drastically cut the time it takes to create high value content for your ideal clients. On the other hand, you know, there's always a risk that you can damage your reputation if you are putting out really crappy uh, BS content. Um, I'm going to skip through this and we can we can talk a little bit about this um, toward the end uh, if we have time or during the Q&A. I did want to share with you a few examples um, just from my own experience and testing. And if you bear with me just a second here, I want to make sure I'm tracking time-wise. So, um, uh, so one of the first examples is uh, in my work, I have a client that um, I ghost write articles for that we post on LinkedIn. And typically these articles will take somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six hours on average to create. Well, uh, since I've started using AI in some of the ways that we just talked about here, I'm down to about two to three hours. So it takes me about half the time and we're getting really, really good results. In fact, this is uh, the, the marketing manager at the company. Um, he's now asking me, hey, can you do more for us? So I think that's a pretty good indicator of, of that this was you know, something very successful. A couple of other examples also um, in terms of creating uh, uh, visual images for the articles uh, for this particular client. We had one uh, article on this whole concept um, because they do sales training. Of, of this winning by a nose. It's a concept out of uh, race horse, you know, horse racing. And so the uh, illustration that went along with the article I found from Adobe Stock, you can see here in the, in the upper left. But I felt like, you know, I think we can illustrate this better. So I asked chat GPT, hey, what can you do with this image to really give us an emotional feel for what's going on here? And you can see the one that came on the right. Now, it's subjective, but my sense was, okay, this really kind of captures the emotion a little bit better. And that was something that that was a first iteration from chat. I will say that was a lucky shot. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes you get images of people with six fingers and, and stuff like that. So you have to keep working on it. Um, there's some other apps out there that are better at doing images than necessarily chat GPT. Um, Mid Journey is one and Ideogram is another. Uh, Mid Journey, one of the interesting things about that app is that you can use other people's images and they can use yours. It's sort of a, just really, you know, uh, an image creation and sharing app, which makes it kind of interesting. Um, another application is, uh, let me see if I can do this real quick, uh, is, um, yeah, so basically I was uh, presenting to a group of, uh, or a mastermind of commercial real estate investors. And I thought, well, gee, I wonder if I could have um, an a AI create a slide deck for me. This slide deck took about a minute to create after I gave it um, some prompts. So um, this is just, you know, again, an idea of some of the things that you can do uh, with, you know, some of the apps that are being created out there. That one, that one was kind of fun. This is uh, very briefly, I'll give you a, a quick run through of a chat I did with um, chat GPT. I was asking, how do you, how could we find uh, deals on this uh, commercial uh, investing website? And um, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if there was a, an app that could really narrow down the deals on this website, um, kind of needle in the haystack sort of thing. It took a lot of going back and forth before chat finally kind of got the hang of what I was looking for. And that is the key, I think, to using these things is you've really got to dig deep. And what we ended up coming up with was um, a code snippet that I, I don't know for sure that this is going to work, but I get a sense that we're we're on the way to this thing working. So, so I think the lesson there is uh, don't give up at the first result that you get with uh, with API. Sometimes you really need to dig deep, and and it is in there. One last example from my own experience um, in pre in preparing for this presentation, I thought, hey, would it be cool to make uh, an ebook? So. There's a difference in chat GPT if you use it between the, the, the version 3.5 and the 4.0. And what I found interesting was that the 3.5 version actually created a much more in-depth book versus the 4.0. So 
I don't know what that means, <laughs> but it, I, I think the the point would be uh, you just need to really get out there and and experience things, roll up your sleeves and, and try stuff. If we have time, I'll share with you this um, this this app here is totally amazing. Uh, it is uh, basically uh, a sales rep closing a deal. Um, uh, and uh, it's all done with AI. It's just an AI. Um, hey, Reach is an app you might want to use uh, to scale your LinkedIn marketing. And I'm going to close down here pretty quick because I know we're running out of time. Link Whisper, Link Whisper is um, an amazing tool for uh, building your SEO, uh, doing internal links. Um, you can create a website in 60 seconds with this app. I've seen it done. I've got some plans for it myself. Um, this program here as a real estate investor is mind blowing in terms of the data that it puts together to help investors find really qualified properties. I'm going to conclude, conclude here with a couple of thoughts. AI is a really fast and powerful horse, but you are the jockey. It's really up to you to work this thing. And, and just to kind of recap the way that I highly recommend using it, um, to, amplify your content is start with research, outline it, create it, critique it with AI, but it's up to you to take it to the last mile. That last mile, so to speak, is, is up to you. And I think in today's world, you're only limited by your imagination. I'll just leave this quote from Steve Jobs. I'd love to see what Steve would be doing with all this today. Um, he said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. And uh, you've got to have faith that this is somehow going to work out. So th those are my thoughts. Looking forward to Q&A here. And uh, gosh, I hope this has been helpful. If uh, if I can be of any more assistance here, you know, please let me know. Uh, I'll leave this up on the screen. Uh, feel free to book a call with me or shoot me an email. I'll be happy to send you the slide deck or examples of those two eBooks um, or anything else I can do to help you out today. Thanks, Mike. Um, so let's move over to Q and A. Um, there is a question here in the chat from Tanner. Tanner, do you want to come off of mute and just ask your question? Yeah. Um, my question was like, you showed the graph at the beginning of your, um, presentation and well, first off, I, <laughs> thanks Mike for coming. I, I really appreciate that. This has been super fascinating. Um, but, uh, you, you did show the I think it was one of the first slides that talked about it had like enlightenment and then the plateau of AI. Um, with this unprecedented technological evolution, do we continue to measure um, technology in that way? Or is, is this because it's kind of an unprecedented um, rapid rate of of evolution, do we have to start measuring things like that in a different way? That was that was the question that I had for you. Yeah, do you, do you feel that it is um, different here than than other technological revolutions? You know, from cryptocurrencies to you know going back as far as the railroads, um, telephone, radio, things like that. Um, so I'm just kind of curious what what's your take on it? How do how do you see it evolving? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have a answer to it, but I if it seems to me like a different animal. And so I'm wondering if it's you know on, on a completely different linear plane when looking at um like technological evolution. Um I don't know, but, but I guess um I really don't have an answer for that. I could just see it being a different beast. And mm -hmm. um, and I think part of that is discovering what that really is. I don't know if we fully can grasp it or if we ever will be able to fully grasp it. But it, it, in knowing that, it's like maybe it, is it is it a completely different animal and we just don't fully understand that at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly don't know the answer to that. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see. Um, Danny, you talked about using the voice inputs. Um, can you come off? Is that just, you're just using the dictation on your computer for that and having a conversation? 
Yeah, so I think on the phone, uh, you can install the ChatGPT app and it allows you to talk to it. And it also has the text to voice feature. And it's very useful because I don't need to type it all. I just can like talk like with a human. I don't think you can do it on a website, uh, but I did find a couple of uh, Chrome extensions that kind of insert the voice uh, input feature there, which is also super useful to me. It's, it's just something that I found out along the way, uh, playing around with AI and using it. That's cool. Um, Mike, I have a question about, you talked about saturating uh, the, the using, that this goes to the, to the full of uh, um, actually hurting in the sense of marketing, right? That there's so much out there that as you read it, at least in the current iterations today, you can read something and go, yeah, I'm not really sure if this was, I think that this was not written by a person and it's not really connected to me. Um, can you talk more about kind of how to overcome uh, some of this? And maybe it's just to your point about being a good jockey, but maybe some tips on how to go from what the content is that is being provided and then how to put the human element back into it. Absolutely. Yeah. I was fooled by a series of videos um, provided by one of my um, vendors in the, in the marketing space. So they, they do Google ads and things like that. And in their onboarding process, they have, I don't know if you've seen these video, you know, basically they're bots that um, I, I was like, well, this, this gal is just teaching me how to use the program. And um, it took me a while and I was sitting, I was sitting there thinking, gosh, this seems, there's something about, I can't pick up, she seems like she's from some, somewhere else, but I, but I can't recognize the accent and there's just weird phrasing that she has. And of course it wasn't a human, but it, but it sure, you know, kind of got, it was like, it got past my ability to detect that. So um, I think the, one of the first things is it depends on what your messaging is. And I think for a, you know, for the function of what this thing was that they were doing, they were just showing you how to use an app and, and providing instruction like that was a lot less about marketing than it was about just providing information and instruction. When it comes to, um, what marketing is, is, is engaging people with your solution to their problem. People do not, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it's human nature to not want to deal with a machine. So the critical piece for us as marketers um, if we are going to not get lost in this ocean of, you know, potential spam, which, which is happening to a certain extent is to use AI all the way up to the point where we're having a real communication with a real person. So what that means is in, in my case, for example, um, I will work with, um, chat to create, uh, an article or any an email or a series of emails and I'll develop some really good ideas working with with chat and and could even and I've tried this and it doesn't work is could even let chat actually write the content for me um and uh whether I recognize it at first or not I would go back and I'd look at that content and I say this is this isn't real this just it has people can smell the bs I mean um, and I think similar to my story about with that video, who I thought was a person turned out to be a bot, something intuitively showed me that that wasn't a real person. And I think that's the, that's the danger we run into and the thing to watch out for, um, is to take it to the point where, okay, I've got a lot of good information here. I think we got some great content but it's really up to me to, to take the final mile and communicate 
um, with my prospects out there if, if we want it to be um, effective. Is that, am I kind of addressing your, your, your question here? Yeah. Um, I think it's, it, it's evident to me when someone is just copying and pasting content out of a, out of GPT and, you know, throwing it into link a LinkedIn post or, you know, using it in a message. So, and maybe that's the solution is that we all just have a, a GPT plugin that just says, yeah, this is clearly not written by a person. You can just ignore it. <clears throat> uh, other questions from the group for Mike. I would just like to say one more thing on, on that topic, Spencer, is I think there is a spectrum of low to high um, functionality where I actually don't mind interacting with a bot if it's a helpful bot. Mm -hmm. um, but as we as you go up the scale to sort of the levels of complexity and trust, then I think, you know, it's just a lot better if you've got that sort of, you know, human touch to your communications. Agreed. Yeah, I like Danny's comment that someday we may all long for the days of the human generated spam, which was better than the <laughs> AI generated spam. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, I'm okay with a minute of silence too. If someone's thinking about their question, we'll just hang here for a minute. I'm just casting around for because I I write medical scientific stuff and and I've never seen good good things come out of that with uh, software. But often there are graphics associated with it, and uh, there's something called perplexity that somebody just dropped in the chat. Yes. I'm going to have to take a look at, but I'm wondering if you know some ones that are worth trying for graphics that I don't have to pay subscriptions for, uh, or even uh, what I particularly hate are those 30 days free subscription. And then they, you know, sneak in a charge after that. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking through the, um, everybody's experience. Seems like um, everybody's kind of in that, that middle of the road space. So like, um, what, yeah. One question I have is, or two questions. One, what is the biggest mistake you've seen people make when using these tools or AI? And second, what what would you say the top three or five tools are that you've seen that people should be using? Yeah, great question. Um, I The first thing that comes to mind for me in terms of a mistake that I would point out is... is is one that I made. Um, so I'm writing a book right now and uh, it's on the topic of real estate investing. And I thought, you know, I'm going to let chat write these little passages here and there. And um, as I'm going back through and editing the book, I'm just realizing, no, it's, it's, this just isn't right at all. It's the, the voice was all wrong and, and stuff like that. Um, other than that, uh, you know, uh, I would have a hard time giving you an instance right offhand of, of how somebody is is doing it wrong. I'm not sure I've even detected it on some occasions. As far as some of the apps to use, um, I think it depends on what you're doing. I can tell you that some of my favorites are um, tools that uh, I've been using for a while for writing that are now incorporating uh, AI. Uh, so one example is uh, CoSchedule has a, a scheduling app, or I'm sorry, a, um, a headline uh, analyzer that you can use. Um, and, uh, and that one's, I find a, a really good sort of idea generator. So if I'm creating or look, looking for a headline or a title, um, you, you basically plug it in and it gives you a score and then it suggests, you know, use different types of words, different what they call power words or um, uh, informational words. I could do a quick demo here, but I, I think I want to move on to other tools. Um, there's uh, a subject line analyzer from a company called OmniSend. If you type, actually, if you can just Google, you can just Google 
um, subject line analyzers or headline analyzers. And, and, and there's, there's quite a few out there. Um, I like those two in particular. Um, there is, and I'll just give you one other last one for, and this is a little bit deeper into the funnel um, with the uh, more of a sales uh, function uh, to create sales pages, uh, video sales letters and saying things like that. There's a tool called Benson. It's actually just B-N-S-N. Um, that is, it's, it's a really uh, robust tool. It, it asks you tons of questions about the thing that you're going to sell. And then it actually creates this whole sales letter for you, including long form, short form, video scripting, and, and everything else. Those are a few of my favorites. I think the reality is, you know, get out there and, and Google stuff. Um, and, uh, and, and you'll find things that are, uh, you know, more targeted to exactly what you're doing. I have, and by the way, if it would be helpful, I, I do have a, a very long list of some amazing apps that, um, uh, just, you know, ping me, shoot me an email or, or whatever, and, uh, I'll be happy to, to send you that list as well. That'd be awesome. I think we'd love to, love to share it out. Uh, thanks, Mike. And uh, thanks for including your, your contact info here. If uh, folks want to get in contact with you and I see you're also on LinkedIn, which is, is great. Um, thanks everyone for coming today and we will see you next week at the same time. Thanks y'all. Really appreciate your saying. Thank you, Mike.